commandos. Yeah, this is the second one. This is the only one I actually own. The others I got from the library and then played, so I don't have any covers for those. Now, if this is the first episode of a high-quality series you're watching, let me just explain the approach I'm taking. First, I describe the overall gameplay and experience of the series, and then I get into specifics about the games one by one in chronological order. And before anyone else brings it up, yes, I know of Commando Strike Force, I think it's called. In fact, years ago, before it came out, I discussed with several of my friends who also love this franchise, and we agreed that, you know, first person down, down in the action, maybe being able to switch back and forth between various ones, maybe a co-op kind of thing, that would really be the only way to go after the third one, because, you know, how much more can you do with that same exact form? However, I played a demo of Commando Strike Force, and if you took the commandos out of the title and didn't call specific characters, you know, the spy, the Green Beret, it would basically not be commandos at all. You know, it's almost commandos in name only. I mean, back when I was talking about it with my friends, we were thinking, you know, Hitman or Prisoner of War, that kind of thing. Certainly not Battlefield 1942 with a couple of unique, distinct abilities. So no, I never played that one full version. Don't really intend to ever do so, unless I find out that the demo was a complete fluke. And this is a review of the first three games and the mission pack to the first one. The games always give you a bird's eye view of the entire battlefield, and unlike a lot of other strategy games that have that perspective, there's no real fog of war. I think there might be sort of something like that in the third one. Honestly, don't remember everything about that one. But other than that, you can basically see everything. The games all have you in enemy territory, and you have some men, and you have to accomplish specific objectives, like killing a certain person, blowing up something specific, like buildings, anti-aircraft guns, rescuing prisoners, stuff like that. Now, what I've described so far might sound like your regular real-time strategy game, with bases and, you know, large armies on both sides, building structures, stuff like that. However, when I say you have some men, I'm talking about a handful. Sometimes as little as two. No, I'm not kidding. All three games and the mission pack have you engaging in guerrilla combat using specific abilities to outsmart the enemy who are always outnumbering you. If you're spotted, your mission may be lost right then and there. It basically is in the first game and the mission pack. The alarm will be raised and those pesky, disciplined Nazi soldiers will swarm out and give you a really nasty case of lead poisoning. This makes it extremely intense whenever you have to blow something up in the first game or the mission pack, because with few exceptions, the moment something blows up, you're going to be faced with a massive group of Nazis armed with either submachine guns or long-distance rifles, and you're going to be wanting to make your escape really quickly. The AI in these tends to be pretty strong. The response times of the enemies, again, especially in the first and the mission pack, leave absolutely nothing to be desired. They spot you, they shoot you. These games are all quite challenging and a lot of fun. The gameplay isn't particularly reminiscent of any other game that I can really think of outside of this franchise. I mean, apart from what I already said, the sneaking and hiding of Prisoner of War and Hitman, and the gradual elimination of opposition of Hitman. Other than that, I can think of any games that really give you this experience. Now, since the enemies are always... Now, since the enemies essentially always have superior numbers to you, and they tend to have equal or superior firepower, and they can get away with using it, you can't. The best weapon you have is really the element of surprise and your ability to approach them whilst 
not being seen on account of various things. Now, every single member of your little commando squad have specific abilities. Now, what I'm going to mention here is just the regular group. I'm going to get into the couple that are only in the second one when I do the review of the second one, because they're only in the second one. They didn't stay for the third. <clears throat> The one everybody loves, myself included, and for good reason, is the Green Beret. He is a pure killing machine, and he can get to areas that the others can't. For example, in the first one, he scales a cliff face. He has a regular pistol like most of the others, but the weapon he'll be doing the most killing with is the Bowie Knife. He can walk straight up behind an enemy soldier, and I think what he's supposed to be doing is slit his throat or something. After that, he can then pick him up and carry him away, even stash him in a barrel so that no one else will find him. Provided there's a barrel nearby, otherwise he can maybe put him inside a house or something. On that, whenever you do stash bodies inside buildings, be sure to notice if that building has, you know, the Nazi flag on it, because if you walk into one of those buildings, you're gonna get sliced and diced and the mission will be over. Those are barracks. That's where the Nazis come out if the alarm is raised. Again, referring to the first one in the mission pack, mainly. I'm a bit of a broken record today, aren't I? He's also able to knock enemies out and tie them up, though you don't use that much outside of the second one. He can bury himself in snow or ground, obviously not if you're walking on, like, rocks or something, and it'll be... S and he'll be so shallowly buried, if that's the saying, that he can jump right up at a moment's notice, and if a soldier just happens to have just passed over where he was laying and has his back turned, you can bring out the old knife. And of course, he is the owner and operator of the decoy. It's a simple enough concept. You place this box on the ground, then you activate it with a remote switch. It makes a noise, an enemy hears that noise, walks over, stares at the box for a few seconds and you stab him or otherwise neutralize him or simply use this opportunity to get past the area that he was watching before. Then there's the diver who does exactly what it says he does. He dives. He's got scuba gear so he can stay underwater for as long as he wants. And then he's got a harpoon which can also be used above water and he has this nice inflatable boat that he can use to transport the other commandos and he also has a knife. Then there's the driver who, at least in the first one and the mission pack, is the only one who can drive all the vehicles. I don't know, maybe German cars were really difficult to figure out back then. There might be some cars that some of the others can drive as of at least the second one, and the third one the poor guy got cut entirely and everyone can just drive every car, I think. This does make him immensely important in the first one in the mission pack whenever you have to escape because he's going to be the one to drive you or fly you or whatever. He also, at least in the mission pack, has what appears to be a German rifle and a German submachine gun. Though you basically don't use them because, you know, alarm. Then there's the sapper and for anyone out there who like myself, unfamiliar with that term, he's an explosives expert, basically. In the first one, the mission pack, he's the only one who can handle grenades. In addition to that, he, of course, whenever something's to be blown up, he's the guy you call. Yeah, that's about it for him, especially in the first in the mission pack. The same goes for the sniper who snipes. He's got a rifle, sniper's scope, he snipes. That's his thing. And last but definitely and last but most definitely not least, we have the spy, who can speak German convincingly enough that as long as he has a uniform, he can trick any enemy that is at least below his rank. 